helpful, and that's the heart we need to have. Um, let's see. Who's got Revelation 1 3? Sandy does. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. What's word number five in that verse? Readeth. Readeth. Blessed is he that readeth. That is, the person who reads the Bible is blessed. The person who um, goes beyond that and hears as in, as in uh, not just hearing, as in the physical act of the nerves of the ear receiving an impulse, but the hearing as in obeying, and keeping, as in living in those things, that person is blessed. But if we don't ever read, we won't ever start the process of obeying and living in the Word of God. Reading the Bible is key to a believer's life. Well, capital, capital letter B, why read the Bible? Well, because we need it. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7 through 14. I'll read this one. And uh, Can someone look up Psalm 119? Verse 105 for me, please. Let's see. Ken, could you get Psalm 119, 105? Sure can. Thank you. And uh, Kip, could you get 119, 25? Yes. Thank you. Where was I going? Oh, Psalm 19. Uh, 19. I'll get that one real oh, quick. Oh, okay. Um, Psalm 19, verses 7 through 14. The Bible says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. So the Bible here then describes itself in these verses about what it does in our hearts and lives. And it goes on to say, More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. The next verse says, Moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them is great reward. The conclusion of this is, in verse 12, Who can understand his errors? How can a person understand the mistakes he's making in his life? How can a person see the wrong Cleanse thou me from secret faults. It goes on to say, Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. It goes on to conclude, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. How can we understand the errors of our ways? Through reading the Bible. When I was around, uh, well, my parents got me reading the Bible from an early age. Really, from about the time I was six, I started reading the Bible on a pretty regular basis. And um, this was a wonderful blessing growing up in a Christian home where my parents loved God and loved His Word and made sure this best, to the best of their abilities that their kids would follow in the right paths. Well, um, around the time I was probably ten, I quit reading the Bible by and large for whatever reason. Um, and for about two years, I really didn't read the Bible very much, and I did, really wasn't walking very close to God at all. And, um, well, the long and short of this was, is my dad preached a sermon about reading the Bible, and I was convicted about it. And I started reading the Bible on a regular basis again, and um, saw many things in my life which needed to change. And um, by reading the Bible, I was led back in the path of living right. And uh, we'll go more over the cleansing the Bible gives us about a changed life and these other things a little bit later. But the Bible cleanses us from sin. It keeps us back from presumptuous sins. And in verse 14 it says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, the Bible says in Proverbs. Um... Uh, it also says in Matthew, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If we fill our hearts with the word of God, the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart will be acceptable in God's sight. 
we can pray Psalm chapter 19, verse 14, repeatedly as we like, but if we fill our hearts with something which isn't the Bible, and if we fill our minds with that which is unprofitable, we will not have pleasing words and meditations of our mouth and heart. Amen. Well, how to read the Bible? Come back next week. Roman numeral three, results of Bible reading. Capital letter A, a changed life. Let's see. Oh, we skipped. Did you do two and three? No, we unintentionally skipped those. Let's see. Psalm chapter 19, 105. Kent, if you would read that, please. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The Bible guides us. It shows us the way in which uh, we as believers are supposed to go. Why, why, why do we need it? Well, we need a guide in this life. We need the instructions, the road map, the way to go. Um... Psalm 9, 119, 125, please. 125 or 25? Uh, 25. 25. Yes, it's verse 25. The Bible gives us life. That word quicken. Someone define for me quicken, please. What's that word mean? To make alive. To make alive. Thank you. I love that word quicken. There's no other word like it in one tight, compact word like that. It's an older word we don't use so much, but to quicken something is to make it alive. That's why I love the old words to the hymn, And Can It Be? Alive in him my quickening head is a major difference between the newer words, alive in him my living head. And I hate it when people try to revise the hymn on words. They shouldn't do it, but that's a whole other topic. Uh, anyway, um, this is my daily rant. Forgive it. On we'll go. Let's see. Um, the Bible gives us life. It imparts life to us. Anyone um, ever seen, maybe on TV, or a few of us have seen in person, when a person is basically dead, what we do is we take this little bag and squeeze air into their lungs. This puts life back into them. We compress their chest to pump their heart, to push the blood through their body, which is going to take air from their lungs, from that air we're squeezing into them, and it's going to impart life to their body until, well, hopefully whatever cause can be reversed. Like that, the Bible imparts life into us. Spiritually, we cannot have life apart from God. A Christian who is not in the Bible is not quickened by God's word. Sure, he's alive spiritually in the sense that um, he's going to heaven, but spiritually he is unfruitful, he's unproductive without God's word. Well, Roman numeral three. Now that we're back where I unintentionally skipped ahead of, capital letter A, James 4.8. I'll read that one. Who can get for me Psalm 119, verses 97 through 104? We'll volunteer to read. Sandy, thank you. And uh, 47? I'm sorry, 97 through 104. Uh, cleansing, Psalm 119, 9 through 11. Who can get that? Charles, let's see. Joshua 1, 7 through 8. Who's got that one? Nick. All right. James chapter 4, verse 8. I get it. Okay, Rudy, go ahead and get that one. Is that the first one? Yeah, James 4 8. Yep. Oh. oh, that's okay. Go for it, Rudy. Yeah, I can do it. James 4 verse 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double minded. Reading the Bible produces a changed life. When we draw nigh to God, this is a promise. God promises that he will draw nigh to us. And if we draw nigh to God in our Bible reading, God will draw nigh to us. His presence will be with us. And um, God wants to be with us. He wants to give us a changed life. We as believers, it, um, it ought to be unpalatable to us to think that uh, of living the way the world lives. I mean... By that, what I mean is, by unpalatable, what that word means, what I'm trying to say is, as Sam would say, <laughs> what, I, what I'm getting at by that is, uh, 
it ought to taste awful. It ought to be